You know what really grinds my gears about parents when you still live in their house? They put the word my before everything. My room, my desk, my furniture, my God, we get it. I understand though, y'all pay the bills, so y'all have every right to say that. But it becomes a little too annoying when they start doing too much. And ain't nobody more professional than my dad at doing such thing. My dad was about that action. I remember when I'd be doing some classified research on Alexis, Texas. My dad would call me downstairs and interrupt me. I'm pissed. Not because he called me down, but for the fact that I've been 1v1 in my schmeet for 15 minutes and now I gotta postpone the match. You know how hard it is to get my meat hype again to fight after stopping? I'm ready to box this nigga. I go downstairs, my dad got that menu look. I'm talking about menu look. Hey, y'all clean my kitchen up. It's filthy. And that means make sure the dishes are done, wipe off my counters, sweep my entire floor, make sure every germ, atom, ion, dust particle is off that floor, no go. Y'all eat, then leave without cleaning the kitchen every day. It's finna be a whole lot of changing in here. Hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen here, Major Payne. If I wanted a lecture, I would've went to history class. I, right, you tell us this every day like we don't know it already. If you're so worried about your kitchen, how about you get in there and do it yourself, nigga? Damn, he really about to rock my shit. Let me tell y'all something. Don't ever disrespect y'all parents like that when they provide you with food, shelter, and a form of love. Don't blame me though. I'm just showing y'all an illustration of what I was thinking back then. Yeah, man. <laughs> my parents got my ass nerve, and I, but I needed it, man. It's just tough love because my parents cared, man. <laughs> and in a sense, overprotective. That's probably what sparked them to doing too much when it came to my social life. Some of y'all probably got them parents that just let y'all bring any and everybody in their house. Nah, homie. My parents was gangsters. Again, they was about that action. Especially when I asked them to go spend the night at a friend's house. I'm talking about as soon as I asked them to go over somebody's house, these niggas turned into FBI agents. I need to meet their parents. Social security, home address, birth certificate. Give me it all. I'm not trying to point out the obvious here, but um, ain't nobody got time for that. The guy I asked about, he was a family friend, but my parents still said no from time to time when he wasn't present. So you know what I did instead of asking why my homie wasn't present? I left, I grabbed my friend Ronnie, brought him to the house, and asked him while he was present. Mm-hmm. You can't finesse a Vanessa. Because knowing my parents when I did this, my chances of them saying yes went from zero to a hundred real quick. I was looking at them like, say no, nigga. Say no. I dare you. I double dare you. Speak. And I got my answer. I don't gotta say it. You know what it was. We skidip, meet up with our other homie. We're gonna call him Dan. And we go to his house instead. When we get to the crib, bro, I cannot make this up. It smelled like straight doodle brown water. Me and Ronnie been over to his house many times before, but it never smelled like this. Like, how do you got a spotless car, but your house smell like McBounce that at? In my mind, I'm full of regret because he's sitting over there smiling because we came while I'm over here struggling to breathe. Dog, your best friend need to be Mr. Clean in a magic eraser because it's smelling real musty in here, nigga. Turns out his smell came from his dogs. <laughs> Fast forward to nightfall, we're all chilling and it's getting pretty late now if you ain't learned nothing from this video learn this nothing good goes on after 12 a.m i look over to dan dan stands up looks at the time and says oh snap it's that time it's that time somebody finna get got tonight see when somebody says get got i'm thinking death but that wasn't the case. See, back then when you did sleepovers for guys, there was one rule everybody had to follow. First person to go to sleep gets a punishment. You see, this rule put a fear in my heart, especially because I'm a very sleepy person and Dan was a very playful person. Those type of friends are dangerous in situations like these. But however, mama ain't raised no B-I-T-C-H and I wasn't finna be the first one to get got. Only the strong survived. Two hours goes by, then five hours goes by. Next thing I know, it's the morning. And see, what I didn't know about Ronnie and Dan were that they were about that action because it was 6 a.m. in the morning and they didn't lose a single ounce of energy. Meanwhile, I'm over here in the corner about to pass out. The bags under my eyes have bags. I didn't want to fall asleep, but bro, as soon as that clock hit 6.30, nigga, I folded like paper black 
out. I woke up five hours later in this man bed, stood up and saw Ronnie asleep on the floor and Dan had left his room and luckily, your boy was okay. No scratches, no bruises, nothing. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this is a first. They let me off this time. I get out the bed, I notice my socks were off my feet and at first, you know, I brushed it off because you know, it's no problem, no big deal because I move a lot in my sleep, so I'm thinking like, okay, maybe I just moved so much that they fell off while I was asleep. I grabbed the sock, and as I'm putting my foot into the sock, I felt something sticky inside my sock, and it was not glue. <laughs> the fear that went through my body. <laughs> I look into the sock and saw something that made me want smoke on sight. Bro, this man done left a dookie in my sock, bro. You need a diaper, bro. You need some tissue, bro. It's $5 at the store, bro. You done gone too far. Too far, bro. This man done left a dookie in my sock. You need to go see a doctor. Now. Bro, this man literally took the time to drop his pants, stand over my sock, and drop Santa's gifts before Christmas. If it wasn't for the fact that Ronnie was there, I would've got my airsoft gun, put a beam on it, and turned it the off the red dot reindeer. Don't hate the player, hate the game. You signed up for it as soon as you agree. When I get pissed off, I get that crackhead strength. I kid you not. I go to Dan's living room, see him, and he has the audacity to tell me, you like your punishment? You had it cut. Oh! Ah! 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 Jesus Christ! Oh! Ah! Wait! Ow! Oh. <laughs> Ow! You can hear his little sisters in the back like, ah! Somebody got got! Somebody got got! Oh, the light! The light! I can see it! Yeah, it was actually me. But hey, somebody had to catch that fade for me. Oh.